to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. Protonic reversal. Protonic reversal with your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that we've brought about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with sharp and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. <laughs> That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed it is. It is a science thing, it is a science place. Tis a scientific fact that we're all up in your face. It is time once again for the one, the only protonic reversal. Welcome to it, welcome to it, and additionally, welcome to it. So there you go. Uh, another, we're, 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 this is one of the last episodes before the final push towards 10 years. That's like, wait, that's like celebrating the penultimate <laughs> event of something. Doesn't make any sense at all. But uh, 10 years coming up next month, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, in less than, I think it's 29 days, if I remember correctly. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Still be bringing you these wonderful shows, or hopefully wonderful. We'll see how it goes. Night's young. Uh, and these discussions that, you know, I hear that people get so much out of. That's good. I get a bunch out of them too. Tonight, Ralph Spite. I'm super excited to talk to this guy. Uh, I've known him since, or I've known his work since the days of uh, Victim Family the first time around, really, and uh, as well as The Freak Accident. Th there's a character limit in these titles, so I couldn't type out all of Joe will be in the Guantanamo School of Medicine. Uh, this is, of course, as someone who plays in a band called Conan Neutron, The Secret Friends, this is a familiar complaint. Anytime you got a sentence long band name, it's just, it doesn't match our times. But uh, an amazing player, uh, Bay Area fixture for people that only joined up with the show in recent years i don't always talk about it i am a uh 22 year old 22 year old i wish jesus 22 year bay area resident and uh from oakland and i got to see a lot of fantastic bands back when it was still marginally affordable uh to be an artist which is now really no longer the case so as one of the guys who's uh, still out there and doing it and doing it well I'm very excited to talk to this man, and it, it's uh, something I've been meaning to have happen for a while, and it happened in a very funny manner. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, but before we do that, before we do anything other than the three minutes of just me talking, welcome to Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. I'm your host, Conan Neutron. I'm a rock and roll lifer that's been touring and recording for 24 years, most known for the band Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends. Music is a huge part of my life, and I use the format of this very long-running podcast to talk about music with musicians whose work I enjoy and respect, but who may not be household names. This is episode 379. Now, if this is your first time listening to the show, archives of it are available for free. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding, at protonicversal.com. However, if you want to support the show and get episodes sooner, $1 a month at patreon.com slash protonicversal will achieve that goal, and it also helps support the show. And if you like the show or even just a single episode, please feel free to like, subscribe on your platform of choice, share it around on the old internet, and even leave a review. All that helps people discover the show. It beats back the almighty algorithmic overlords. And it's a darn nice thing to do, really. So there you go. Ralph Spite, uh, Freak Accident, Victim's Family, Joe Biafra, Guantanamo School of Medicine. Awesome new split with nasal rod. Busy dude. Busy dude. One of one of my uh one of the great weirdo guitar players, and I say that with peace and love in my heart. <laughs> Ralph Spite, welcome to the uh, welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Conan. Yeah, I'd say it's like you and Muraski. Uh as far as like people I think of as like Bay Area folks. Like of just like the great, like, wow, what are they doing? What are they up to? Right. Super outside. Yeah, I just saw Steel Pole Bathtub play again. That was so great. I, I got to see them in Houston due to the largesse and generosity of a fan of this show, but I did not get to see them in San Francisco, and it kind of broke my heart a little bit. So, like, every once in a while, there'd be a thing that happens, and it's like, oh, that would have been cool to be able to go to that. 
Yeah, it sounds like they're going to do more stuff. So I think it's a. I don't think, think you'll have to be heartbroken for long. <laughs> I think it's even in the the Houston thing, and that was awesome. I mean, yeah. that was that was like uh, I, I, I did not think that was going to be a thing I got to do, and like I had the, <laughs> had the rare experience of being like, wait a sec, I'm not playing, I'm not driving, and I'm sitting here with Billy Gould and his Rakia. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. You can fill in. The, you can fill in the blanks, everybody. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and it was a love. It was a lovely time, and uh, it was great. But I still, I still missed out. Um, there, be, there would have been something special seeing them in the Bay Area again. That's all. But it was also special seeing you in the Bay Area, just as a dude, and remembering that I wanted to have you on this show for like I don't know, eight years, <laughs> nine years, however <laughs> long I've been doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't make it in time to see your set because I got caught up at this work dinner, yeah. and I, I told you the story about walking in, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It was totally. <laughs> we were doing. I, I think I, did I tell you that we actually called that the steel pole bathtub ending. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Which, there's a couple like ways in the set, but that was definitely the big noise out kind of I made shaking the guitars, making noises that probably shouldn't, you know, like that. Yeah, that, that, that kind of yeah, stuff. no, I walked in, I was like, wow, this is great, and then it was just over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so succinct, it's great. It's, 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 oh, wow, it's, it's, oh, it's like didn't expect that. Uh, no, no, I, and and that's fine. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a that was a fantastic show. My dad got to see that show. Oh, wow, you know, that was fantastic. He's never he's never got to see me play like <laughs> like a big show right that, that was like well attended where we really killed it like and it was yeah like, and he got the, kind of like the red carpet treatment too it was, it was, it was nice oh that's great it was like the one like coming from punk rock like oh vip section whatever but then you're like well my dad who's like almost 80 <laughs> you know <laughs> maybe that vip section's a nice good place for him to be you know oh that's good man <laughs> uh but that's enough about me literally what about you uh, this split with Nasal Rod. This this is the, this is the newest release. I love Nasal Rod. They're they're an awesome band. Somehow I have never seen them, never played with them. Uh, but I do I do like them quite a bit. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, well, first of all, one of one of the best bands that has uh, the title Chairman and one of the <laughs> one of the foundations <laughs> of, of, of the of one of the maestros of it, and uh, Spit Sticks. Yeah, plays in which is like one of the great one of the great underrated uh, punk rock drummers. So how do you know how do you know those guys? Uh, I think Larry made the connection first. Um, nice. Saw them. I'm not quite sure where he saw them. I don't think he was up in Portland. It was somewhere down here. They had done a couple of shows in Sonoma County, so I think that's where the connection came up. And then, um, yeah, I kept hearing about them from uh, friends in Portland, and then we finally got together and did some shows uh 2019 we did a few shows together um they came down to the bay area we did three and we we went back up to uh the northwest and did three so uh that was that was pretty easy to do and it, you know there's a total affinity i think and just uh, a total similarity in a lot of in a lot of ways right yeah well yeah i mean it's not uh you wouldn't necessarily like they wouldn't they'd be in the same um section of the record store right i realize it's an antiquated way to explain it but right <laughs> <laughs> i'm an ex record store guy what are you gonna do man uh the, yeah yeah i mean even though it's like it's not like a one for one these guys sound exactly like these other guys but they're you know both bands are kind of genre bending sort of aggressive maybe like theatrical almost in their 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 approach and yeah like, yeah yeah eclectic Hectic, sure. Let's get let's get rhymey here. <laughs> yeah, no, I no, I just think it's a really urgent good combo, you know? and and it works really great as a uh, you know as a double bill. And so then we just started talking about this idea of doing a split, and yeah. was going to get in, uh, Biafra involved, and then I think he just got really confused about whether or not we were talking about an LP or a seven inch. So we had everything, we had got everything recorded. And then, uh, Larry again goes to jail. Ralph, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. It's like, oh yeah, we'd love to do the seven inch. And Larry's yeah. like, yeah, no, it's actually an LP. <laughs> so it's gonna be a little uh, more than that. It's gonna, gonna be, be out on good. Nadine records worldwide. Uh, Fantastic. very excited, uh, to be on Mandy's label, you know, and, uh, she's got a lot of great artists on that label. I yeah, that's become a, fans of a lot of people there. A lot of uh, good freaky music, uh, yeah, as they say for sure. So genre bending is genre bending. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's and you're a guy that's 
you know, like myself, this it's been been around for a bit. So like, is it surprising to you as it is to me of the whole like people just happily going into, oh, we're this, we are this genre, we we do this thing, rather than just like, I mean, I just remember like, I was like, dude, if people can just sum you up like that, like you're doing something wrong. Right, exactly, and and I think that's. Yeah, I, I, I think that everything is so formalized in, in that way. And uh, I, I just remember coming up and doing, you know, indie shows, punk rock shows, and there's all kinds of different bands. Yeah. Like, you know, we used to tour with like Tragic Mulatto and like, oh, wow. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah. you know, just like all kinds of different stuff all the time. How do you explain Touch by a Janitor, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right you don't so i mean uh yeah and i just think as times have gone on things have become more and more formalized and people yeah. are taking fewer and fewer chances you know um so I, i'm actually really uh glad about it. it seems like there's a lot of you know podcasts and books and things sort of uh documenting that kind of era in uh in in punk rock and like um kind of reminding people that it was sort of no holds barred you could sort of do whatever you wanted um and uh like anything kind of kind of goes right you know? and uh and i think that that's true like you can still find audiences you come in to a place and you're doing something a little bit unconventional and i think you know people can still identify with it um within the movement you know is what likes to call it, you know, but it's right. He does. You know yes, I mean? he does. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it's sort of like, I mean, I think, you know, when people are sort of thinking independently about it, there's a lot of room for people to experiment musically and sort of like be under the, uh, under the thing, but then it's sort of, you know, under the umbrella, but you know, I'm not really, I'm only really interested in genres in terms of, I guess. Yeah. Like you said, bending them or using them, right. you know, not to get all Frank Zappa on it, but he, he did. I <laughs> no, mean, it's a good example. Had, no, mean. actually, he had a really good, uh, like, sort of theory about like uh, using genres as sort of stock modules, right? Sure. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, here's the, and, uh, and he would talk about having those, like, you know, hand signals that he have, like, you know, right. like twisting a dreadlock, you know, so play, play <laughs> reggae. Means, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. All these, like, inscrutable movements. There was James Brown would mean you're getting fined. Well, exactly. Yeah. Like, you're changing genre. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I just think that uh, you can do that within the context. And so I think my my older work was more sort of cut and paste in that way. Or mm -hmm. sort of like, let's let's tack this onto that, you know, and now I'm sort of like, I think that's one of the distinctions between sort of like the victim's family stuff and the freak accident freak stuff. Accident. You know what I mean? It's like it, within the freak accident, it's more like a kind of trying to cre create like a certain genre environment within a song, like create a mood kind of thing versus victim's family is more sort of like still a little bit more cut and paste that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, not in a bad way. Like, what sort of like you know, think about like collage art or something along. Those yeah, lines, yeah. Right? No, like, I mean, I think the first album was very much that way, and I think it's like gotten a little bit more where we uh, where things there's transitions a little bit more that are a little bit more. Yeah, so I think that better. it's <laughs> well, it's interesting that you have the wherewithal to sort of look at that inwardly because. I remember when I very first moved up to the Bay Area, like the one of the first bands, like, like, oh, you got to check out Victims Family. I'm like, oh, okay, what do they sound like? It's crazy. I'm, that's it. It's just it's crazy. Okay, like, like, do you have any? No, no, it's nuts. You got to see them. Oh, okay, <laughs> but like, Victims Family was a band that like literally defied description because people were unable to describe it. Uh, and, and then, of course, when I did see her, I was like, wow, they're right. It was crazy. Like, like, you know, like in a good way, but in a way that very much appealed to me because I was operating from like a, a similar, especially at the time, a similar mindset. Right. And it seemed like a window into something that was sort of like I didn't nobody realized there was, there was like a death clock going. Right. But then the, the idea of like the Bay Area being like what it was versus like what it kind of turned into, which is just like, OK, this is like after a war and who's left doing it still. Right. Uh, it, it's it seemed like a real breath of fresh air, and the fact that it you know it's hard to sum up. There's proggy elements to it. It's pretty aggressive, but it's not. Doesn't really sound like King Crimson, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like it doesn't really sound like uh, much of anything. I mean, I think it makes sense that 
I think both times I had John Wright on the show, like, and obviously you, you have some <laughs> working relationship with him. The guy from No Means No gave you a shout out, right? It was like, of course he would, because that's a game recognized game moment. Like, how, how do you sum up No Means No? It's like, oh, it's crazy. You got to see him. Right, right. <laughs> and I think it kind of goes back to your initial thing, which is like uh, your initial point, which was, I mean, uh, I think once you kind of figure out what you are doing, um, then it's then you're just sort of your yourself like i i think that's that's the thing in independent music is that you know just this idea that you you know you should really be yourself like i i go out online and i'm in all these weird you know see people posting on threads and reddit and all these things like what what, what do i do you know how do i like better my career it's like god just fucking be yourself you know like isn't that crazy to think about that like it's 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 like it's the most valuable advice Right. And it's the thing that like people just don't know what to do with it when you give it to them. It's like, no, yeah. find out what makes you, you. Yeah. Dig deeper into it. Right. And like go harder with whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. It's like that thing about uh, the Minutemen, right? Where it's like uh, they tried to make the weirdest record they could when they made Double Nickels on the Dime. It's the right. best selling record they ever made. And then when they tried to make something commercial, like it sort of like people like, oh, yeah, like big deal. This. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, isn't it, it? Isn't that just? It's so crazy. Like, it's so crazy that, like, and again, I almost wish to a certain degree that so, someone had mentioned that to me like earlier on, you know. But I think I figured it out like pretty early on. Like, okay, all the people that I really like, all these idiosyncratic players, these iconoclasts, yeah, you, you know, they, they like usually didn't. Either have the, the um, emotional acumen to care or the interest in caring about what anyone else thought about them. They were just going to do what they did. And that there's some truth to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, by the same token, I think it's uh, – I think limits are really good. Like if you're trying to write – you know, I had this high school band or band right after high school. And we had like, uh, we had some show that got booked and no songs. And I think we sat down and wrote like, you know, 12 rockabilly songs, like in a week. And, <laughs> <laughs> sure. and, and, you know, it's like do. some of them were, were pretty good. I mean, that, that band was really funny because like we ended up having like three hours of material and just would play all of it, you know, yeah. but, uh, covers and and everything but i think you know limits are kind of good like if you're okay i can you know i'm just in this mindset i'm going to be this for a while you know or you know if you've already got a lyrical idea then and you can just like take off on it it's yeah, you know, yeah. sort of you, you build a box for yourself almost and then you fill that box up with something cool hopefully. yeah yeah you know, well that, so i mean i see why people do it right you know yeah. um but i don't know can't pretend to be in other people's heads about how they're creating their music. That way lies madness. Uh, t- tell me, so let's let's go let's go all the way back with Victor's family. It was like eighty four okay. or so, right? Yeah, eighty four. Uh, how's it all come together? Because uh, yeah, so the band I was talking about, which ended up being called Idiot Savants, uh, but was, you know had a few names before that. Sure. Um, they all did, didn't they? I mean. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I uh, that started right around the end of high school with a couple of friends about like one friend that went to high school with and somebody else he knew from another. And then, uh, um, so a few friends and we started playing a bunch of shows around and I had started, how did it happen? I started going to Santa Rosa junior college. I'd, uh, graduated from Sonoma high and I started going to college in uh, Santa Rosa JC and there was a record store, and then the high school is across the street and then the JC was right there. It's like all within, you know, like on the same block essentially. Right. Sure. So the, the JC always had uh, shows, you know, bands playing at lunch. And so all the kids would come over from the high school, the ones who were cutting school. And, uh, and so Larry and Gino uh, from Larry had this band, the skirt boys. And, uh, and we started playing all these shows together and then uh, our drummer Devin was in this uh, kind of, I don't know how you call it sort of uh, sort of Bauhaus esque kind of, mm. kind of thing. Although he was like a rockabilly dude too. So there was a um, weird death rock rockabilly <laughs> crossover. You know, he like, was <laughs> right. He was right in the, right in the crux of that, you know, like so, the darker side of rockabilly. Exactly. <laughs> so they had, they had that. And then uh, 
so all those bands would play shows together and you know it's yeah. it's rural sonoma county and there was really no scene there was starting to be shows at the phoenix theater in petaluma but um that became an institution later on but yeah it did but like at first i was going to you know metal shows and weird like all those shrapnel <laughs> records bands were playing there and stuff sure so sure like, yeah going to see all those guys and uh and you get just get you get to see a show right yeah you don't you don't have to like drive to like san francisco to go to totally it, so. and then x finally played uh but the like the um what happened the security people just beat the hell out of everybody like mm. trying to dance anyway so after a while like it sort of became like there was actual punk shows there but we were playing all these weird um parties and you know, like anyway, so all the bands broke up at the same time and uh, and Larry and I decided we were going to start, you know, playing together. And so it all came together really fast. I think, um, I think Larry and I started jamming in the summer of 84. And I think we played our first show in November at at my house. Uh, so nice. uh, we had a we had a lot of material really quick. I don't know how that how that happened because i didn't have a bunch <laughs> written but um i just kind of remember that basically we did nothing except for go to band practice so well there you go that, there's yeah. your answer <laughs> <laughs> i guess you so, close the book on that mystery figure drink, it out <laughs> right drink beer and go to band practice yeah yeah so that, exactly. that was that was my life you know and um so yeah so that's how that happened and then i think it was not very long after that we had got our first like real show which was opening for suicidal and and faith no more in yeah, petaluma yeah. so it's like pretty legendary show there so, so that's gotta be like what 85 or so somewhere around yeah that i think that's early 85 when that happened so what do you what do you like mailing cassettes around and stuff because because kids today don't understand like it's booking is yeah easy. i mean yeah <laughs> I mean, I don't, we don't, we didn't really have anything. I mean, if there was like a, uh, what did we have? Put a jam box we, on stage when you play. No, we did have a four track <laughs> demo and okay. yeah, there were some cassettes that were going around, but like everything was just really word of mouth. And then, um, it seems crazy, but we didn't have anything out. I and mean, then we did send some cassettes out and we did, we did a tour in, um, went out to texas and back nice and played uh like we did a bunch of weird crazy shows um which at the time texas kind of happening i mean there was, there was yeah. you know butthole surfers there was like a, a big boys and uh, yeah yeah no Jakes. we played we played with scratch acid in dallas like the like on the on the first tour you know just I had a homemade scratch acid stuff. in a yeah. uh, t-shirt. Play with no way. FX, By like in front of like six people, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So you're playing with these exciting bands, but it's still like uh, as far as, yeah, these these aren't like career making uh, shows. It's more like, oh my God. No, but I mean, it's cool just, like, yeah, it's just make kind of things that, yeah, it's just those things that you kind of have to do. It's just, it's sort of just bungling into like you know doing like you're just <laughs> really excited about doing it yeah. and uh you're ready to play yeah we just you know we had no record i think we were selling acid instead of t-shirts <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> fantastic it's more profitable i think i mean it's a, it's a model that's been proven to be successful over the years absolutely yeah yeah yeah. anyway uh, <laughs> what's the statute of limitations anyway uh, yeah i know uh no no but it's it's you know like for especially the kind of ground that you guys were traversing yeah you know, and then it's not outside the realm of possibility and yeah. i think we got people's attention pretty early you know just um because of what we were because of what we were doing yeah and so we managed to get on a lot of so in in 85 we also opened for butthole surfers at the mab like nice. you know it's like i mean right away there was a bunch of really cool shows happening and then um ruth schwartz became interested in picking us up for uh mordam and so the first record was 86 right so and then i don't know you know then we did a, a u.s tour in 87 which was you know full u.s but like 
like a total fucking disaster, you know, but also great, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I mean, I think we we're out for 90 days and we probably played less than 40 shows. You oh, know? A lot, a lot oh of just like, lots of days when you're just like yeah, sitting, yeah, yeah. sitting around at someone's house, just like yeah, watching getting, movies or something. Yeah, yeah. Getting ripped off and, you know, yeah. like kicked out of Canada and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Kids today have no idea. Maybe they do. I don't know. But I don't know. But I think it was different when, you know, everyone's got their phones now. They can just, we're just like, okay, we just have to, space out for like two days for our next show because yeah. like, nobody has any money yeah <laughs> <laughs> just sitting around the stranger's house i guess we yeah. go for a walk i don't know yeah so yeah so we ended up kind of like by the end of it it was like we just decided to bail out on like last week or something but then right. of course the transmission went out or something oh, in, in nevada well, like of almost course. yeah so anyway so it's classic stuff like that uh so so when do you when do you like start doing stuff with Primus? Is that like a little after that? Um, yeah, that's a bit after that. That's probably because that's mean, another they, band that not that you guys sound like Primus, but it's another band that was just doing its own thing. That yeah, I, mean, I think I, they they started up like eighty eight, eighty nine, something like yeah. that. So like things I hate to admit came out in eighty eight. Right. And um, talk and, about great guitar players, Todd Huth, man. Whew, oh yeah, for real. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, you know, what, what had happened was Tim who became our drummer was roadieing for Devin and then, uh, Devin left the band and we had, uh, Eric Strand play drums for about six months. And Tim also started roadieing for Primus, like right around the time we sort of became that they, you know, became aware of them as sure. a thing. So then we... So North playing. Bay. North Bay is not that big. For people that are not from California, right. what we're talking about is what's known as the North Bay, which is the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge, which usually is a non-factor geographically. Right. <laughs> not as much as movies would have you believe. Yeah. But it's a small scene that's close to a much bigger scene, but not close enough, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which is actually great. Was, was it, it allows kinda, it to have its own kinda, yeah. identity, right? Its yeah. own yeah absolutely so we were also you know call you know close enough to it all uh yeah. anyway so they they started playing and it just kind of seemed natural and then that whole thrash funk thing we sort of <laughs> we sort of <laughs> vaguely you know fit in with it yeah you kind of wandered and into stuff. it and you, they yeah. didn't explicitly threw you out so it's like all right yeah no it's so. it's, it's impossible to <laughs> overstate how much of a thing that was until it wasn't and then right. it just suddenly wasn't and it was like oh <laughs> what are we doing now where'd that okay. go where'd that go it's, and then it was like for a minute it was like it's swing no really it, <laughs> no come on for real <laughs> no it, it, it was you know there was so many i, mean, I could name them like and I, it wouldn't help anybody but i could name them but but i feel like there was there was um you know like uh, things like deli creeps and stuff like that that like yeah. true heads know yeah <laughs> you know who would imagine buck and <clears throat> would end up playing with freaking guns and roses <laughs> <laughs> like, that's another one like ah that's funny i'm like what no, oh really that's actually happening <laughs> buckethead is he is he he's not as buckethead okay all right yeah didn't have trump winning the election either so i don't know weird weird moments in in history uh yeah so okay so you got th so that's got to be around um uh, so between things I hate to admit and white bread blues, right? That that's like around that area. Of yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like right, right when our drummer left and then, so then Tim became our drummer, um, after sort of in the middle of our first European tour, <laughs> he was kind of roadieing for Eric, but then he was jumping on and playing like a couple of songs, you know, sure. and then at the end of the, then it seemed just kind of more obvious that is stylistically, it was like a little bit closer to what Devin was doing. So, uh, so we ended up with that and then white bread blues is, uh, 1990. Yeah. 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 So, and that's, that's an interesting time. That's an interesting time for music in, in general being like, like right before the big freaking gold rush. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, who, who are you like, what bands are you kind of common causing with? at that moment in time because I, I know you. i mean by then it's no means no alice donut i mean it's sure. really i mean to to some degree like the the golden age of alternative tentacles you know yeah so, absolutely like yeah. um so yeah i mean our first album was 92 on at but um 
you know, we're definitely, I mean, we first the played, germ, with, right? yeah. yeah, exactly. So we first played with no means. No, I want to say it might've been 85. What was that? Owens pizza show 85 or 86. It's definitely with, with that. Devin. I read and, the book. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I should know. <laughs> I know somebody, <laughs> I know when I need to, that's it. I guess yeah. the, the key well, factor. Exactly. <laughs> Frantically Google's no means no discography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think we're common causing with them. Definitely. I mean, there was, yeah. there was some times when we had booked some, uh, where, you know, between, I think John and I, we had booked tour for, uh, for no means no and victims family just you know ourselves playing weird places in utah and <laughs> right. like that, you know um, i call that a flying saucer tour exactly because... right <laughs> <laughs> it's the bill hicks thing right yep exactly you know exactly <laughs> what i'm talking about yeah exactly so uh so then when we so john produced white red blues and yeah. so we we toured all the way up the west coast with john doing uh doing sound um so i mean by the time like we'd been playing a lot of those songs live by the time we were, we recorded them. So by the time we got to the studio, we were, we were shit hot on that record. Right, right, right. Yeah. And and that's a, you know, there's a lot of, well, you have all kinds of things like popping up there. I mean, like, didn't like early version, like Mr. Bungle play with you and like, uh, yeah, definitely. Oh stuff. yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, I remember going up to Eureka, um with a friend of mine and right, like right hanging out there and then uh you know ending up at uh trey's house when he's like mixing one of their demos or something yeah. you know and we played a bunch of weird shows with them petaluma they were coming down to petaluma all the time sure. so it's a, like it's shows before a really the first album you know pretty and like not that hard of a drive <laughs> yeah <laughs> ultimately you know pretty easy, easy. Yeah. so yeah yeah that, that wow that corridor is uh yeah that, that, <laughs> that'd be a good corridor to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm working on a weekend for the freak accident doing Point Arena and Arcada and, and doing both oh, nice. it's like nice. Those are those are fun shows to do. Yeah. Like Point Arena and get like four hundred people who have no idea who you are. So yeah. There's, there, so, there's uh, like, hey, we're, we're gonna see live music now, guys. Oh, okay. You sure are. We're totally into it, man. <laughs> yeah. Great. It's well, a thing I like about yeah, that whole upper coastal scene is like it's so off the regular tour itinerary for most bands that like they don't take it for granted as much. yeah yeah i mean replicator used to go up and play there all the time we had freaking great shows we played at denny's there like tw you know freaking <laughs> 20 years before that meme yeah. you know, it was amazing it was, yeah. it, was, it was a great time uh yeah okay so and 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 there's all the gilman stuff happening to like definitely yeah green day op ivy all that stuff uh neurosis sure. yeah. kind of getting it together bunch of weird shows with with green day opening for us <laughs> <laughs> which is strange to think of. at the time it was like oh that's absolutely that makes sense but it's like yeah wow <laughs> that's so <laughs> odd where were they, where were they uh what's it um god damn it what it was it was like a uh where, where, it was like right before uh the bridge i can't god damn it i can't think of it um Crockett, is that where they where, where they were? I can't remember where they were. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, nobody somewhere cares. up there, somewhere up there. Irrelevant. Nobody cares. Somebody can correct me in the email. I'm sure they will. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then you you got the germ going. Got the germ. And that's what's it, that's really like ninety two, right? So ninety two. Yeah. So that's a crazy time to release a record. Uh, world's kind of starting to go nuts. The Nirvana record hits. What yeah. Was, and at that point, you know, in Victim's Family, you'd been not just doing it, but doing it pretty hard for like, what, six years, seven, seven years, something like that? Like, I mean, a, a while. Yeah, right. Yeah, like eight years. I mean, I, we just like we're playing constantly, like yeah. from the beginning. And so leading up to the germ, I mean, there was a lot of touring right leading up to White Bear Blues and beyond, you know, all the way. It, through the germ like that three years or so we were probably on the road more than we were off it and so i mean that's a probably the most i've ever toured in my whole life yeah. you know and so we had actually played 
what was it like 10 shows with Tad and three of those were with Nirvana. So like before all that stuff happened. So we heard them sort of playing those show, those sh songs with Chad and, uh, yeah. and I guess they went and recorded all that stuff at smart. Um, I think those, those tapes exist, but then they ended up re-recording the whole thing with Dave. Right. 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 So, but did, did you have an indication at all? Like, or we're just like, Oh yeah, they're getting good. Yeah, well, it's weird. Like, I didn't know anything about them. It was, and this person that this person that was booking us, she was, she was like, "You're gonna, you know, play shows with Nirvana." We're like, "Nirvana, we don't know anything." I think the only thing I knew about Nirvana was I saw uh, Chris Cornell wearing a Nirvana shirt. And I was like, sure, "Oh, okay, yeah. well, they're probably good then." So, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. If, if, this, if the already, dude from Soundgarden likes that. No, I mean, yeah, yeah <laughs> I was an early adopter on Soundgarden, so you know. So, was well, that when he was still playing drums and singing? No, yeah. not that early. But, okay, I was gonna uh, say that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah. So early Soundgarden is great. I mean, I even I've come around on later Soundgarden, even like even stuff where I maybe was like had a chip in my shoulder about it. I'm like, oh, these songs are great. What was my problem? But yeah, whatever. That's what age will do to you. Anyway, uh, no, it's funny you listen to those. I mean, like. The quality control in that band is excellent, man. Yeah, I mean, what's my biggest complaint? There's too many good songs on here. I, mean, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> like, that's the biggest complaint. Really, that's your complaint. You make something that catchy with like that many, uh, you know, like tempo changes and or you know, be that weird. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Time so, to changes. So you heard of, you heard about these Nirvana kids? And yeah, so like, I heard about that, and then you know they were great, and then you know there was like uh, you know. And then, and then it was also, you know, knocking over the drums and falling over. Yeah, and shit. antics. Like played, you sure. know, played Seventh Street Entry with those guys. And nice. And uh, where else? It was like Milwaukee and uh, Ann Arbor. So with those dudes. And then a bunch of shows with Tad. So, you know, that was all that was all happening. You know, and then we, we, we sort of we'd go out with bands like that and we'd sort of get like people would be like uh, too many notes, you know. <laughs> Settle down there, Frank Zappa. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Which is, again, crazy to think about because it was sort of a golden period for weird music as long as it was a certain kind of weird music, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, it's so weird to think about now because, like, I mean, because uh, modern audiences, kids today, kids today, they don't care. You know, they'll, they'll listen to like Victim's Family next to Zeppelin, next to Devo, next to like whatever. It's all the same. It's all exi existing at the same time for them. You know, and yeah. there's weird things about that and there's cool things about that. But one of, one of the things of like the judgment of like, do you remember <laughs> the punk versus metal crowd in like high school and stuff? Right. Oh, my God. It was it was like everybody could agree on Motorhead. That was about the only thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is like, oh, metalheads, ah, we're the punk rockers. We like, this. and then oh, uh, punk rock shit sucks. Oh, okay, I, and the idea of even having distinctions like that on on genre lines of non outsider music is laughable now. But it was a very real thing. And again, you're playing with the, with these bands and doing the victims family thing, which is you know you just got to see him, man. Just got to see him. I can't even tell you. You just got to see him. So many times I heard that. I'm like, fine, I'll see them. Uh, but like it, it does, it is something that there was less of a, uh, popular band to kind of point it to and, and be like, okay, they sound like these guys. Right. You know, what if King Crimson was black flag? Would, you know, okay. I could say that now, but like, I wouldn't have known what, what are you talking about <laughs> King Crimson. Yeah. And then I listened to this was like, man, it's like, no, we're not anywhere as tight as King Crimson. No, of course, of course not. <laughs> of course not. Right. It's like, well, because they're playing a tons of notes. I mean, like, yeah, I don't right. know. I mean, but then also like, no, there, there's a propulsive element to it that. I think there's a certain amount of the screw it. Let's rock crowd could at least buy into the live show. And if they're not going to, you know, listen intently to the records. And right. so th right, there's right. something to be said for that. And yeah. Uh, and so again, so, so there's, it's, there's, a, there's a bit of a break. Right, and then that's when uh, Hellworms uh, comes. Yeah. Together. So what happens there is, uh, what did happen there? Um, yeah, if you, oh, I don't know. We did like our fourth tour in Europe, and I lost my mind, <laughs> and just needed to chill out for a little bit. Um, yeah. 
Which you're hitting it really hard for like literal years. Yeah, like there was like <laughs> about four years where we were hitting it super hard and I yeah. just needed to dial it back. And um, so we actually broke up, but we we got back together about almost a year later and uh, and then made Headache Remedy, which came out in 94. Right, right, right. right. So that was another, you know euro tour or two and like a us and stuff like that and so then that's when things were getting you know super super duper crazy you know and um and it's really funny because then we just decided it'd been 10 years and and we were just kind of like we were kind of done you know yeah and so at the end of we did this short sort of like festival run in 1994 and we just kind of like decided we we're just going to be done. And so, uh, and then I think we got home and like the next day, like Sony called Tim going. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're trying to get a hold of you. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys want to make a record? And he's like, ah, we just broke up, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> so it is, yeah, we sort yeah. of like, you know, we sort of missed the boat on the feeding frenzy. You know? Yeah. And I mean, I don't know. What would that record have been like? I mean, geez. Oh, man. Yeah, the big, uh, <laughs> yeah, dude, the, the, the freaking Victims Family, like big major label budget yeah, yeah. record. Oh, man. Yeah. Would wow. that be your Operation Mind Crime? Or would that, would that be? Probably, like... <laughs> probably would. Yeah, that would probably be. <laughs> that's, that's my favorite. I just like saying the words Operation Mind Crime. I don't really yeah, have a strong Queensryche opinion one way or the other. But... <laughs> Got to got to hand it to them, I suppose. Well, uh, I, I mean, you remember the album, so right, exactly. So, just, so there's just, that. Exactly. So they must have been doing something right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, then we were just going to be done, and Larry, what happened? Like, oh, Larry had moved to Austin in between mm. the you know during the 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 breakup, and they came back, and then he he started this band with Jason Christian. Um, Saturn's flea collar and they were like oh, right. oh yeah let's you know like so it's just the two of them and and he goes and Larry just called me he's like we need a guitar player I was like okay <laughs> so Larry's playing drums in this one right. and um and Jason Jason's great uh writer man great songwriter like really interesting bass player just like uh just the way that they, like, our, our stuff was really comical and unserious and it was really a good break from victim's family i listen back to those records now i'm like god they're fucking kind of genius this, this yeah it's flea collar record but when we were making it i was just like man this is like what are we doing here right <laughs> dusting yeah. up in weird costumes and like you know i don't know but just trying something like completely different. doing something different you're doing something just, that to just like just really fuck sure. with just sort of the pretentiousness of the whole uh you know, we're such great musicians thing, you know, and yeah, you know, basically writing like fart jokes, <laughs> <laughs> fart jokes of the band. Yeah. So there you go. That's, that's yeah. that sums it up. We're no, I mean, there's, there's some pretty profound shit in there. No, it's, it's not really good. trying to be as I, I actually really, Hey man, I got a cassette somewhere. Record. Yeah. I, do I have a cassette player anymore? I do not, but I have a cassette somewhere and it's good. <laughs> I got a, I got a CD for you or maybe even some vinyl. I, great. I can actually listen to it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we did, and then it became this this cycle of like uh, one LP, one single, one mm. European tour breakup. So right, that's, right. What, that's yeah, what yeah. happened to Saturn's Flea Collar, and then when Larry and it moved back to bass, and we did Hellworms, Hellworms, uh, and then uh, with Joaquin Spangeman on drums, and uh, and that was you know one album, one single like one european tour and break up <laughs> yeah so this is so that's about nothing matters but like that's when i moved up to oakland and right like so that's like how i knew you I was, like, I was like oh this guy's always in lots of bands <laughs> yeah yeah and they didn't realize oh no victim family was around for forever because i only had like a like a tape i think of like white red blues that right and, and, I, and i was like I didn't realize that it was like, oh, this yeah, is Yeah, right. We were already <laughs> about like 14 years into it by the time we, right, right. we kind of caught up to it. Yeah, no, it's like totally, well, you know. Oh, what happened to that Victim's Family Band? They're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no, it was okay. So, uh, yeah, and then Hellworms, I mean, we were, uh, we were again doing like, there was a lot of, I think we were hitting it pretty hard with the touring yeah, um, yeah. on that one. And uh, I, we were just trying to do that all the time. So, um, 
So so after Hellworms, that's when David kind of comes in the picture, right? Yeah. So a couple weird things. Yeah, went down there that like that ended, and I kind of remember when. I'm kind of trying to remember how that happened with Dave getting into the picture. Um, I mean, obviously we knew Dave because we toured with my name and, um, sure. you know, so knew him from Tacoma, that area. And so, yeah, so Dave came in and moved down to the Bay area and we started working on the songs for Apocalicious, which kind of ended up with the same sort of cycle, like one single, one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one LP, one European tour and done, you know, why like, mess with a good but, thing? No, well, I don't know, but it's just kind of like where we were at, you know, and it was right, just right. kind of like, but, uh, you know, I'm really, <clears throat> I really love Apocalicious as a record. Yeah. It's like kind of trying to, I don't know, again, trying to change, like trying to be victim's family, but like have it evolve into something else. And, you know, I was listening to more noisier kind of like trying to bring some more noisier elements into it. So there's like some synth stuff and some weird. Yeah. There was some, some expansion of the thing that that man did that, yeah. you know, wasn't just like, Oh, you guys want to hear this? Great. We'll do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, where we're not trying to be just like uh, I don't know, mathy samba punk or something, you know, or like <laughs> trying to, you know, samba punk. <laughs> yeah, but but like it would be very easy to like, especially when people kind of lock into a certain era of your career, but yeah, that's the stuff, man. It's all about that stuff, and it's like, okay, well, we're doing this now. Hopefully, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like that when a band like just sort of, you know. I don't know, brings you along for the ride, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I You're think there's either. Along, you know? I mean, I think there's. I, I think there's really some something really cool to being like, you know, the Ramones or ACDC or something. You find sure. the formula, you just do it. Like just that's you. That's your thing. You do it. Like that's awesome. I I love that shit. You know what I mean? But there's also things like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, right? I mean, I love Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, and right. there's entire swaths of of the career of that band. I'm like, you couldn't pay me to listen to it. Yeah, but like some of the records are like some of the best rock records ever I right think. and then there's and some I'm there's some up. great rock stuff and then there's some stuff that's just great like you know just songwriting stuff yeah and, the strong you know, you know and just being just kind of fearless about whatever it is you're gonna and do whatever, you whatever the thing is you're doing now is the thing that you're doing now and, and yeah. i think that there's a lot of you know bowie got got to do it yeah you know iggy got to do it maybe to less good results we all remember butt town but uh -huh. <laughs> but like I, you get to a certain point and it's like it kind of doesn't matter. Like you're already, you're already in like, Oh yeah, I, I, I mess with it. You know, that, that's, that's, that's my stuff. I love yeah. it. And I think when people are, especially for a band that's like wildly creative too, when, when a band starts doing like different things, it's like, well, again, un unless you're the Ramones or ACDC, which I feel like the natural order of things is not to do that. You know, like wasn't like the whole thing of Johnny Ramone like wouldn't practice his, practice guitar because <laughs> like you didn't want to get better, which is like okay, dude, come on, like don't let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here. But <laughs> <laughs> like it's genius, but it ain't that genius. Uh, but like, you know, all right, sure, and and you know, th there's there's a lot of ACDC records that are not Power Ridge or Highway to Hell or Back in Black too, and, and it's fine. Just these like what at least one or two good tunes on it, you know, right on. But if you're a creative entity, if you're doing an art on things, you have to be pushing forward or you're, or you're looking backwards. For sure. Ultimately. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems like that's uh, – so coming back around, that's the, the apocalypse just kind of seems like that was sort of like the vibes there of like, well, we got, we got to push this a little bit and try something different to feel like this is going to be worth our while to do this. Yeah, yeah totally. I think there was a lot of – I think it was a lot of different sounds happening in heavier music as that went on. And I also think it kind of yeah. goes back to what you were talking previously about, um, you know, sort of blurring the lines between sort of punk and metal and all yeah. those things like become really a lot less of a problem, you know? Dude, you may as well be talking about rotary phones. You've tried to tell that to like a younger listener, like what punk and metal. And then, they, and then they'll give you an example of what they think is punk and what they think is metal. And it makes you want to crawl into a hole and die. It's like, okay. <laughs> Never mind. Let's talk about something else entirely. But but, but I think I've come around. To, like it, it, that doesn't like make me feel old. That makes me feel happy because it's like, well, let's think about it. Unless you're literally putting things in bins 
at a record store? Who cares? Right. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Oh, this is Krautrock. Oh, well, actually, this is uh, in the experimental section. Dude, whatever. It doesn't matter. So, like, it's, I mean, I, I find that empowering. And, and I think that that's, again, the nice thing about the instant availability of everything and everything exists at the same time, the same place, and the same volume level. You know, there, there, there's a certain degree of, of leveling of the playing field. Now, unfortunately, it also means that without advocates, stuff dies in the vine. But that's a different podcast entirely. So tell me about uh, post that record and before what was it, it was a uh, uh, Phoenix Theater and Bottom of the Hill. I was actually at that show. Uh, oh, okay, two thousand four show. Right. So when Tim comes back, so yeah. so basically what what happened? Um, yeah. So it's about two thousand two and two thousand three, two thousand four. We did some shows with Dave in Europe. I think that's um, and then. And then Dave just kind of, I don't know, didn't like living in the Bay Area and wanted to go back to Washington and, yeah. you know, like so. Um, and then Tim had been really working as a as a drum roadie, you know, pretty hardcore for a lot of people for like <clears throat> 10 years, like a lot of huge people back and like the Beastie Boys and like oh, sure. all these yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy fucking Cheryl Crow, like all these people, you know? So, uh, right. so, you know, Tim had had that career and then we kind of like all just started talking and just started playing, decided we want to do something for 20th anniversary show. So we did the, well, yeah, it was like the Phoenix and, um, and the bottom of the Hill, uh, with all of the offshoot bands. In That's fact, right. I think I have that flyer here. Oh yeah. I have that poster here in my office somewhere. Yeah, behind the uh, yellow tango uh, flyer there. <laughs> yeah, because because it was uh um yeah because there was like freak accident like hellworms right uh, uh, yeah uh, meow. Uh, meow meows right yeah meow meow uh, and the meow meows because that was pre triclops but yes exactly right, uh huh because uh, yeah. we we played with triclops a good amount uh later on but I, I remember at the time that was like that was still a little bit to come but no that was that was interesting it was sort of like the victims family family yes. Yes, indeed. indeed. Family, and family so, band. yeah. And so in those, <laughs> those couple of years I had started working on the, the tracks, uh, at home, I kind of like got into recording at home. And so I started working on the right. tracks that became the first freak accident record. And so by that time, yeah, it came out in 2004. So, uh, so then I was like, I had a, a kind of a version of the band that was playing around, um, playing those, those first album songs. And was there ever any mindset with that of like, okay, it's going to be different because of this? Or was it just like, let's just play the ball where it lies and see what happens with it? Uh, what? Like, as far as like guiding people? direction for the, for the freak accent? Oh the yeah, no, totally. I mean, it was like, I, all those songs were things that like absolutely didn't fit in Victor's family. And it was right. more, I, I, it kind of came it, actually the Genesis of that really came down to, I don't know if you, knew Ian Brennan from around San Francisco, yeah, but of course. It, like Ian ran the, uh, the, the, uh, open mic at the brainwash. brainwash for years. Man. One, one of the great, I always talk about laundromats that also do shows and like, yeah. I always make sure brainwash is in the conversation. Cause it yeah, always gets... no, it's, it's the classic one. So exactly. for some reason, Sunsy Malone's <laughs> a sit and spin. I can name them all, man. If you can do laundry there, I can name them. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, we're gonna bring that back. But priorities. Uh, <laughs> I was talking totally. to David Yao about that at our LA show because they had a wash and dryer. I'm like, yes. <laughs> put in so some good. laundry. I'm gonna put in the dryer during McCluskey's set. Hell yeah, yeah. it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> so um so Yao shared my enthusiasm, by the way. Just, just so you know. So I and for some reason thought it would be a good idea to have me uh well, first off, he he, he thought I should play acoustic shows and i had never done that in my life and uh i think the first thing that happened was he had me this would have been around 99 2000 something like that uh he had me um open like at mccabe's in santa monica the guitar shop in santa monica oh, for, this yeah. guy, uh, for this guy um mabadu diabate who's a Cora player from Mali and and I had a van so like uh, Ian wanted me to drop him off as his other show in Santa Cruz you know what I mean so I drove down yeah. there and like played this show with Mamadou and I'm like playing a acoustic show for the first time in my life and there's you know I mean there's there's like a hundred people there and they're sitting 
Yeah. Uh, have you been to McCabe's? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, God, I haven't thought of that name in uh, forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was very familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people are sitting, you know, and uh, and I just thought I'm just dying up there, you know, like I'm just because it's a know, totally different know. world. <laughs> I, I'm nervous. Like, I mean, yeah. I think I I've done a lot of stuff in music, and I think that the hardest thing to do in music is play an acoustic guitar song and sing oh. it like in front of like 10 people i think yeah, that's man. the hardest thing you know what yeah. i mean but so there's I'm no playing, safety net there's no not space at all, no volume <laughs> nothing to hide yeah, behind exactly. at all you know what i mean it's just there with your i'm just there with my voice <laughs> <laughs> just there let it all hang out so to speak yeah so you know i'm sitting there and i thought i'm just dying there and it occurs to me in the middle of this show that it's like oh my god like what's wrong with these people and, and it finally occurs to me it's like they're listening <laughs> Right. Oh my God! Totally. <laughs> yeah. Been in a show where people are actually listening to you instead music. of like rocking out yeah. or like you know so then, banging it or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So then I am put me on this tour with a bunch of songwriters um, from the West Coast, including uh, like Bob Forrest was one guy, and then oh uh, sure Rico Rico from the Mekons, Rico Bell from the Mekons was on yeah. that, and a few other Bay Area people, and we did this like RV tour up around like boston and like played about like 10 shows at these weird like pubs and like cafes and stuff and then ended up at this um at this like farmhouse like out in western mass like oh, wow. and just had this whole like i mean ha like a couple of weeks of just playing all these shows and playing like songwriting stuff and it really got me thinking about uh, I don't know more about, about songwriting right yeah, like in a yeah. different way and so there was a lot of things i was also um, I took some classes at the, I have this kind of like off and on love, hate thing with jazz and learning jazz. Yeah. So it's like kind of been at, at the time when victims family was coming together and I was going to Santa Rosa JC, like we were all going to see black flag, but I was, I was like studying jazz improvisation at Santa Rosa JC with this guy, Bennett Friedman. So like, you know, that's, that's explains exactly what happened to me. You know right, what I mean? Right, it's right, like, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> it's like by day I was like learning Mixolydian modes and by night I was like, you know, trying to untie Henry Rollins with shoelaces. Right. But, <laughs> Well, and, and Ian was like, he was like one of those guys that was just like a dude that made things happen. Like, remember that thing he did in um, Dolores Park with Fugazi and Slim oh yeah, and man, what Chestnut a great, and all that. oh my yeah. god, what a great show that what was. What amazing that was. That was like a, I forgot like, that was him. Looking back, like I hate to say it, but like looking back, it's like oh, that is kind of like you know when Hunter S. Thompson talks about like the wave kind of breaking and going back. It's like that might have been that for San Francisco. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. I hate to say it. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, like two great Fugazi shows in San Francisco. The oh, other yeah. being at Fort Mason. Did you see yeah. that one? Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, and uh, um, Maritime Hall too. They played Maritime Hall. Oh, with, see, uh, I didn't see that one with the X. I oh, saw, wow. and, and and I saw them with the X, and I was and Thrones. Oh wow! And, and I wasn't in the mood for either one. And luckily, I got to atone with the X years later with uh, Shellac, and, and I was like, "Oh God, it's, it's freaking genius! It's amazing!" But I was just like, "I just I only want, I wanted to see Fugazi. That's all I wanted to see." Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so after that whole songwriter tour thing, that I, you know, I had a bunch of songs, and I was kind of just kind of like thinking in that mindset, and that's kind of became the basis of writing the. the first you're thinking about things a little actually. differently, right? Like you're thinking yeah. about like songwriting. I mean, in the, I think the easiest way to think about it is generally if I'm writing a song for a victim's family, I usually start on bass. Um, I usually start with, with sort of like a bass yeah. versus drum sort of, you know, more kinetic kind of a feel right. where with the freak accident, I'm either starting on like a, just an acoustic guitar or a piano or something, you know? So, and that, that seems to be a good way to sort of, for me to sort of break, okay, where's the line between these things? You know, sometimes things go over one line or the other, but, uh, yeah. but yeah, so the, then, you know, it was really difficult to, I don't know, sort of decide what the freak accident was going to be. I'd been in a couple of bands like Larry and I had both done time in Plainfield also, Plainfield. <laughs> <laughs> which, <laughs> Oh man, how was that? <laughs> oh man, it was great. It was great because that was the first time I played with Mike Branham and, and Kimo Ball. And, yeah, okay, uh, sure. So, so Chemo, that, yeah. that, that lineup was Kimo and Mike and Larry and I and then Smelly. And that's, that's the um, 
that's the lineup that made Smear the Queer, the, right, the right. Plainfield record. And uh, no, and I just remember first time just playing with Chemo, just being like, like, you know, we jammed for like a couple of hours and I was just like packing up my shit going like, I got to go home and practice, man. This guy is too good. <laughs> what a great player, right? I mean, man, he's seriously, amazing. what a badass. He's so amazing. So, so Chemo and Mike actually ended up being, the Chemo ended up playing bass in the Freak Accident. So the second album, um, Tissue Okay, Sample. sure, sure. So is that... um Tissue Sample. Right, right. And, and he's uh, also playing Griddle, I think, at the, at the time, right? If I remember Yeah, correctly. Griddle. Yeah. Griddle is going full tilt at that time, too. Yeah. Which is also totally amazing band. I, yeah. They, it's like they put out their, their best record right as Jello got going with Guantanamo, which, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get to that. But, like, it's almost yeah. like, oh, that's cool, but they just, like, made their The Wall. <laughs> You know, yeah. like, like they just oh, like, oh my god, this is so good, and it's like, oh, and Jello just abducted most of your band. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally, so um, good. Uh, let's see. So where were we? Like, uh, uh, so, so, so 2004. So the family yeah. gets back together, and and so Tim is you know really busy doing uh, roadie stuff, and he's touring most of the year. But we're able right. to do you know from from then until now, like we're able to do probably. You know, a few shows a year usually. Get some things in. Yeah, you know, keep it adventure so, based. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's difficult for us to get together and write. So you know, it takes us eight years to come up with a single. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. And then it's taken us another what sixteen or something to come up with five more songs. So yeah. uh, you know, I mean, mostly we've been um, just playing things live. Like we did do what was that last year? with uh with gibby anyway i'm getting ahead of myself with oh yeah yeah the, gibby uh, and the paul uh, green uh, rock academy so more bands with long names and i, yeah. I realize what a hypocrite i am for calling that out but doesn't no matter. that was funny when you were mentioning that because i remember uh touring with jello when we played uh one of the o2 joints uh i think it's southampton and they have a very long uh long narrow uh, uh, uh marquee, marquee. <laughs> and, and i couldn't believe it like the whole they had the whole the thing opera and the guantanamo school of medicine like fit all, give all them right. an award because that's hard yeah. work that that's uh yeah it's 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 truly absurd and speaking personally if i ever thought there was gonna be a live band i never would have called it a I, sentence long band name but that's oh my god it's like a paragraph it's yeah. insane so uh so yeah so victim assembly starts playing it's and a, then yeah I don't know, that, that, those those <laughs> those few years there i don't know like uh 2004 yeah um yeah like i i, I didn't like 2004 to like 2007 there's like not really a, a whole lot going on like playing yeah. shows trying to get something going with the freak accident but like eh, not much happens um jello decided he didn't want the second freak accident record which whatever like i don't even think he didn't even listen to the first one and i think when he finally did he's like i don't want this on 18 <laughs> too pop you know so right. like it came back with like this sort of you know pretty punk record you i know? put that out <laughs> <laughs> like i think he didn't even know he put it out sure, sure. so uh you know anyway. bless him yeah i know bless it i mean man i, I, I love not... him to death though, no wrong. man i would not have i mean let's be real i would not have the the, the, the career i've had sure. without that guy you yeah, know? he's so. objective force for good but yeah for sure it's a, it's rat. highly entertaining especially yeah. when we started yes. working together more closely i'm sure so, yeah yeah oh, it's great you know so um so i was complaining on facebook that you know we got dropped from alternative tentacles and uh and this guy robert uh, goes uh sends me a direct message he's like hey you know i'm a huge victims family fan and like i used to have a label uh here in europe and if you guys um if you guys you know want to put out you know some vinyl in europe like i can i can help you get it pressed like i can yeah put out your record in europe like oh sure. awesome that's great that he's like good. yeah so we uh we ended up getting um getting to open for no means no in europe for a bunch of shows for uh, all roads lead to ausfart and <sighs> Right. so yeah, yeah. Oh. so like 2007 so that was great and um so except for germany right so like we're you know playing for like three people in germany <laughs> like these massive shows with no means no in england and, yeah. and and ireland but man it was it was really awesome and um so that's how i met robert uh dietrich at gate to hell 
And, you know, he just kept being like, oh, and, you know, I also own a backline company so I can get you a really good deal on on rental gear. Like, oh, great. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, yeah. So uh, so then I already had him, you know, I'd been friends with him for a few years before, like this whole Biafra thing started happening. So then yeah. he started coming along on tour with with Jello and, you know, like taking care of a lot of uh, our stuff and helping us out in Europe. So, but it all came from me complaining on Facebook. <laughs> See, and they say it isn't useful to complain on the internet. That's what no, I mean, I, I usually don't, you know. A but true I, success story. I mean, I've learned not to, but it worked that one time. So right, exactly. <laughs> it's only has to work the one time, man. That's, that's, yeah. That's, that's, so, <laughs> yeah, after so 2007, and then uh, we recorded. So the freak accident recorded um, this record, and then I... I don't know, whatever. I think I was mixing it in my studio, but I had a microwave too close to the to the drive, so I like bricked the hard drive. Oh. <laughs> it was the only co copy of the, the uh, EP that, um, and so that 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 kind of stayed uh, stayed dormant for a while. Yeah, that's, um, that's a hard one to come back from. Uh, yeah, it was. When we eventually recovered it, uh, yeah. a few years later. Well, I don't know, ten years later or something. Um, but like around 2008 is when Biafra, uh, hit me up. I'd actually jammed with Jello and Bill Gould and John Weiss back in like 1998. He was trying to get something together and we had all kind of nice. come together before. Um, and so, you know, we all got together again, like 10 years later, um, because he wanted to do something, it was going to be his 50th birthday in 2008. So he was like, for the big yeah, show, the, of course, the big yeah. five. Oh yeah. So yeah, he wanted man. to, um, so that's where that came from. And well, the first yeah. time, yeah. First time I saw Guantanamo school of medicine play, I think it was at, was it the covered wagon? Uh, yeah, exactly. Like couples, like maybe second or third show. I mean, Billy was still playing. Yeah, him. third show. So, was, so what happened was we played the two shows for his birthday in two thousand in two thousand eight, and he, I, did, did birthday. Did, you said the word birthday and balloons <laughs> appeared. I don't. That's magical. Wow. Oh, okay. Really strange. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me, people. I don't know so what that was. Mean a lot when people are listening on audio only. <laughs> people like, like, what are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> balloons disappeared. Audio listeners. I don't know. I don't know. Oh I don't man. Know too much uh so we played those two shows and then we were in the practice room for like a year yeah like yeah. we didn't do anything for like a year except for rehearse just, just grinding and, grinding and just grinding on it and chemo came in to play guitar and um and then uh and then we played that show at the covered wagon yeah which is great and then faith no more got back together so it we so we lost bill so we <laughs> made the record we made the record played the yeah. show at the covered wagon <laughs> And then, uh, and then Andrew Weiss joined the band. John's brother, right? Yeah. So the Andrew Weiss, who, right, right. Can't, man. I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's the, the pedigree of that band is, is pretty fantastic. If people can get past, you know, the the novella of a name. I mean, I right, exactly. I had met <laughs> Andrew before, and I'd actually done some jams with, like, did some weird art opening jam with him before, like, and played like some improvised stuff with him and John yeah. before. But I never really hung out with him until I was in Guantanamo School of Medicine. Immediately, we just like started touring, and like, this is some of the, like the funniest tour. Those, like, I those really, early Rollins Band records, man. They, yeah, that's the that's the stuff right there. Yeah, I mean, great musician, but just as a human being, and just like the the comedy level on those tours is just like <laughs> between like sure. Andrew Chemo, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a you got a clever crew there. Right? <laughs> Cello, you know, I mean, it's just like a, you got an improv it, comedy troupe that plays music. No, I, I really after <laughs> after a few years there, I was really wishing that we were doing a reality show for that band because it would have been fucking great, man. Yeah, absolutely. We had all yeah, it was a really good one. So, uh, yeah, had a lot of fun. Andrew has a lot of great stories. He's a good dude, dude. I, I bet he does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've actually I, I've actually been trying to get hold of that dude. I was I, was, I think he would be a good dude to have on. Yeah, he but, would be. But again, as you well know, I have a tendency. I, I work in like epochs of time. Yeah. <laughs> getting people on the show. It's like, I'll get around to like 2030. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, so yeah, Guantanamo School of Medicine is doing his thing. Uh, 
and then it's it's kind of like oh for the first time in a very long time oh joe biafra's got a band again you know right like, like it's not just like oh he did a record with no means no and he did a record with melvin's it's like no he's actually this is this is his band he's like right. making new music it's crazy yeah no i mean it, like so we went and toured europe for the first time in 2009 and, and like people were freaking out because he yeah. hadn't been over there since like i mean he'd done some shows here and there but, but as a proper hadn't, tour in Arizona, hadn't been or... a tour since like the last DK's tour, like right. 1986. Like generations have risen and fell. No, <laughs> but I mean they all know him, you know. Yeah. They were like it's, so it was really funny because you know I would get off, get off whatever the bus or out of the car or out of the van and be like Jello. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> get mistaken for Jello or I'm like no, you know, or like he he wouldn't go to sound check, so I'd I'd be you know sound checking the the main vocal mic and doing my you know trying to sing like him and everything and then people asking me for autograph like, back squinting back. and kind of like mm. i didn't know he played guitar <laughs> when did he do that is this a fugazi thing it's, it's like it's ian like, mckay <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> i didn't know i didn't know mckay played guitar <laughs> yeah 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 exactly we went for the same thing i like that uh yes but you're in a situation where all these people who spent a lifetime listening to this music are getting to experience it live for the first time and you know to, it's, that's an incredibly special moment it would seem to, to yeah. be able to be, be a part of you know it's like you've got 800 kids singing along to holiday in cambodia yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know like it's a crazy oh, one of my favorite thing. one of my favorite things about one of my favorite holiday in cambodia memories was we played it's on it, you can find this on youtube too it's uh we played in sao paulo uh in brazil brazil nice and uh we're in the um we're playing we're like about a verse a chorus into holiday in cambodia and all the power goes out uh and in the entire uh building Ooh. and and john just keeps playing drums yeah. yeah and and the whole crowd ended up singing the rest of the song <laughs> it's really amazing oh that's awesome it's great you, you can find it on youtube that's the rock and roll magic right there yeah that's great yeah no man we added some it was it was amazing being that band man like there's there's a lot of stuff going on so i i hope we're gonna end up doing some stuff yeah again. i was gonna say is it in the rear view now or is it just not no i i mean i don't think it really is i mean it's really up to jello right now i mean he started having a little bit of health problems in uh like you know right before the pandemic and right. uh you know and uh there's other other people in 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 the greater gsm family like some health issues going on sure uh so we kind of were slowing it down and then like 2020 hit and everything you know yeah, yeah. went to shit. but i keep talking to uh i keep talking to jello about doing stuff and he he just wants to have new material before we start rehearsing i was just like you know i ran into him at that steel pull bathtub show and i'm just like dude we could be dead before the next rehearsal let's get, <laughs> together. I mean, let's, get let's get down to brass tacks here biafra yeah so well, anyway. but no but it's the, the nice thing about well the nice thing about Guantanamo school of medicine is it wasn't just wasn't just like a nostalgia act right it wasn't just yeah. like here's the big vegas dead kennedy show like yeah. say well, that was one of the big debates, you know, during the whole the whole thing, you know, and, and I got to say that Andrew Weiss was like he was definitely on the side of like, let's not play any dead Kennedy stuff, at yeah. all. you know, because because of the Rollins thing. Right. He was like, yeah, he, yeah. Goes, he goes, we we went out. He, he was talking about how they went out, you know, first Rollins band tour. People just screaming out Being black flag songs. Super like, like yeah. totally. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't do anything. And by the right. time they went out for the second tour, like nobody was fucking, nobody yeah. was asking for that anymore. So, I, and that makes sense. But there is, there's something about how it all went down between those guys, Angelo, and like just sort of the great sort of like oh, kind of like that's how it happened. That it isn't the same thing as like Kim and Thurston from Sonic Youth splitting up the way they did, but it was right. like demoralizing in a special and specific way. Yeah. That it's like, well, it's kind of cool to have some of those songs live again, especially if people never got to see them. You know, they, they oh, didn't. Oh, absolutely. You know. Yeah, absolutely. But but it's, there's one thing to do that. I'm trying to choose my words incredibly carefully here. There's one thing to do that. And there's another thing entirely to just be like, that's what you do. And that's what that's what it is. Like, if you're not, 
writing new material as a band than at, at a certain point. And I, and I think that's react. where Biafra, it's like totally on the same, yeah, yeah. same boat. Like, you know, he's got his legacy with DKs and everything, but he's sure. He's like wants it to be about now, you know, and I and I think that's goes back to what we were talking about earlier in the hour. Yeah. You know, it's just pushing, like, pushing forward. Like you want to just keep going, you know. I just want to keep writing music, you know. That's why I keep making, you know, pressing three hundred copies of a, a <laughs> record that nobody ever buys. You know what I mean? Like I don't care, you know. <sighs> yeah. <take it> <laughs> uh, no, but like I mean, the the chemistry in all the lineups of Guantanamo School of Medicine has always been like, oh, if I did, if, if I wasn't like I know that this is Joe Biafra. Obviously, I yeah. know this stuff, but it's like no, I would just see this band. This band like yeah. rips. Like the, the yeah. way it all fits together. I mean, together is Andrew really great. Left, then you get Larry, you know, yeah. And, that, and Paul Dallapella came in when yep. John when when John left, and Paul's just incredible. You know, all great players. Everyone's just yeah. fantastic. And then, players. and then when Paul left, like then Jason, you know, yeah. just like was, you know, has just become like just amazing as a drummer. Yeah, so. yeah. So we've been incredibly fortunate in that band to just, you know, play with, I mean, obviously I've been playing with Larry for 40 years. So there's like, there's a lot of, I don't know what you call it. I call, I call it like player telepathy. Yeah, it, that's you know, pretty much you, it. You just, uh, you, you know, you don't need to look, you know what they're doing. You can feel it more, as much as you can yeah. hear it. Yeah, you got a com common language for how you're going to work things out, mm -hmm. you know, and that, I, I think that's, that's, that's pretty cool. So, freak accident. It, it kind of becomes more of there's more time for it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, there's more time for <laughs> to it. To put it bluntly. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like what what happened there. So, yeah. So first, there's no time for it. Like as soon as we start, you <laughs> right, know, not like, at all. Yeah. Just set it set it aside and basically. Yeah, and then things kind of slow down for Biafra, probably starting around 2016. I mean, we're still touring, but he never really likes to do anything like a very long tour or anything. Yeah. And again, Victim's Family is maybe playing a month out of the year, which might be three shows. It might be 10 shows, you know, like it's usually small you know, distilled adventure based. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> kind of, kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, there's a new lineup that came together in like 2015 and uh, made Misfortune Teller. And we also did the, um, what did we do? Oh, we did that uh, Joy Division. Like where we, oh, we, uh, we play all the surf stuff. Yeah, tropical. Yeah, yeah, the tropical. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was play great. all the surf surf uh, versions of the Joy Division. I love that but, man. That that was I was that was I was like, it's really fun. I like to do that <laughs> stuff live. You know, like it's it's great. We've been like throwing a a, a few of those in recently. Yeah. It's been really fun. I think we might do another one of those. I think the uh, the new lineup wants to do wants wants to redo it with more songs. I think we're going to do. Why not? You know, I mean, it's a good do, it's like, a good stick. I want to do atrocity exhibition. <laughs> gonna say what else would you do right yeah totally absolutely yeah why not as surf sure it's it, it actually really works it's great so uh oh so no i mean like I, I like what is it the first one like disorder or something I was, I was like i'm into this i'm like so like no i man i uh, just getting into like i love joy division but me too but like they're almost impossible for bands to cover because it's so serious but i think the thing that i didn't really under comprehend about their music is how melodic it is super you know, like melodic you think about, yeah you think about his singing it doesn't really seem that melodic until you try to break it down into like an instrumental part and then it's like wow he's really his, his singing is really very melodic yeah but that's not the first thing that strikes you about it no no not know? at all and and uh yeah, like what a great like it's not if you stop and think about it, what they what they did without him with New Order totally makes sense, right? That's like, oh yeah, you only need to like tweak a couple things and like this is like the biggest pop you've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. It just happens to be like, oh, well, it's shrouded with this like deeply uh desperate emotional connection uh vibe more than yeah, anything. For sure. Which for some reason and I I also think there's just something cool about uh doing an instrumental you know sure yeah. isn't something real i don't know anyway look like so, the merman or uh uh you know like any and where it's like oh, it's like oh that's cool i wouldn't have thought of doing that yeah <laughs> you know, oh, interesting <laughs> yeah so let's see so then i finally paul della pella actually um 
repaired my hard drive that had the uh, the EV <laughs> on it, and, <laughs> sure. and so I was able to finally put that out in sure. what, 2022. Yeah. Um, the Octopus Head EP. So, uh, so that was cool. Finally got to get that one out, and so yeah, I guess we started doing more in 2015, 2016, um, and then yeah again covid sort of like you know destroyed yeah. everything um oh, then we hurt. emerged with a new lineup you know sure and yeah. uh and started working on uh the stuff that just became outer space is boring we got austin uh from uh winter rocks and um yeah uh, uh <laughs> mongoloid and, and whatnot yeah, I mean, yeah. that's great I love yeah that dude. totally great great uh great bass playing great uh great graphics stuff you know yeah. so that's been really cool it's like his posters are freaking yeah I'm trying, so I'm trying to think yeah I'm trying to uh there's a great winter rocks poster he did which, which i was like god damn, god damn that's really good i wish this was for a show that people cared about yeah and then <laughs> uh and then stark raving brad on the drums oh of course other. yeah 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 stark raving brad yeah with total scene fixture you know the, the true heads will know exactly from when you from when you first uh yeah, I don't know. It might have been like a little bit before you got to town, right? Like, well, he plays in the Antler right? family too, right? Because we played with Antler exactly. family. Um, it was actually, I think it was what it was like, the fall before COVID hit, right? Uh, and they were great because I just knew, I was, like, I literally all I knew about them was that Tom Flynn had a new band. Yeah, like, there's great. a new Antler family record coming out. Uh, which I'm super right. stoked about. Actually, he's yeah. oh, Tom's supposed to be in the show. Fuck, I can't figure that out. Uh, but like, um, it's all I knew about it. And then like when I saw him, they blew me away. I'm like, this band's great. Like it, it, I didn't even know, the. I, it turns out it's like, oh, I know all of these people. But yeah. like, from different from different bands and different pieces. But I was like, God, this band's awesome. Like I love it. I, like I was like, let's do more stuff together. Yeah. And, yeah, but Brad's been COVID in hit and stuff, you know. So, <laughs> oh yeah, Brad's, Brad's been in so many things, marginal profits and like hellbillies yeah, and just like just all over the map, you know. He's just a dude that yeah is like in a lot of stuff, but it's all like good stuff, you know, not like in a bad way. Yeah, uh, yeah, but I'm glad that I'm glad the Antler family stuff's finally seen the light of day because I was like I was like because because I was like wow this new band's rad like I and then it's like oh and COVID and nothing's happening great right. <laughs> I mean, I, that's not a unique story, but like that, that one especially kind of hit me hard because I was, I was like, God, this is like, I, if close your eyes, you wouldn't realize it's a bunch of old stories. <laughs> <laughs> Peace and love to everybody in the band. Love you. Well, I'm much. hoping that everybody's closing their eyes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, squint if you squint. Oh, no, while they're watching me play, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, there's, there's something to be said for, you know, people make jokes about it, but punk rock. It, it this is the first time people have been allowed to be old and play like that kind of music you know yeah because the first time it's literally happened and it's doesn't mean you have to like just do civil war reenactment reenactments you know like <laughs> it's like you can still be vital yeah totally that's yeah it's, it's interesting because i've got probably eight there's eight new songs that the freak accidents working on oh, and we're funny. playing we're playing about five of them live already and uh there's parts for two more so i think we're pretty close to having the next record pretty much written and you know i i just yeah i think that's true there's i mean where else would you go but forward right like let's mm -hmm. just keep doing more new stuff and like i don't know maybe people don't want to see that when you're in your 50s or 60s or whatever you know like yeah but, but some people do you know like i mean um, you know, I'm still discovering bands that like, I probably should have known about like 30 years ago. Right. You know, and then people are, <laughs> people are like, right, right. people are playing and it's like, wow, they're still, they're great. You know, it's like, oh, they've been around like 20 years. You just got on. <laughs> I mean, man, that's, that's, that's the other thing. There's just so much good music out there. There's like so many people like working really hard playing. Yeah. I think, I think it's the reason a man, I really like your show is like, you're just shining a light on people that are just just doing it man oh, like thanks, we're man. just we're just doing it you know like i mean i think it's important again, well again it doesn't matter like i'm gonna i'm gonna do this anyway like they don't yeah like it or like you're too old or like i don't like your clothes or fucking you're not generic enough or 
Like, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, there's, I think it's, I think it's really interesting the era that we're in for music right now, because it's sort of like the whole DIY thing sort of won, right? Like, I agree. I mean, yeah. You know, it's, um, I mean, I think it's difficult to navigate and make it survivable and everything. It's not a level playing field, to be clear. At it, all. It, no, it's not. But, <laughs> but there's but, more opportunity now than there ever has been. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, when I'm on the, like I was talking about being on whatever, all these like social media platforms and musicians are talking and complaining, you know, yeah, <laughs> hoping, which someone, which will, hoping canonic- someone will put out the record. You yeah, know, we've canonically established that work. So why wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I just complained Kidding. about it a lot more. No, I, I'm just sort of like, I mean, it's just, um, you have the ability to convince, connect. Let's convince right? them. You don't need them. You know, like yeah. that's, I, I think that's always been the, been the thing and then like you know they come beating a path to your door or whatever it's kind of like sony calling right. us like, the day after we broke up, like nope <laughs> pass <laughs> we broke up you missed the boat son well no i mean and, and also people experience things asynchronously right they can have i, I, I had someone at the rickshaw stop show ask about like oh how long how long has this new band been going it's like new 10 years old man like yeah and it's like but it's whatever they didn't mean it as like a bad way it's just everyone's got busy lives you know it's, it's like all right well and then someone else is like yeah and then if you someone got a busy life like, like 10 years goes by pretty like, quick like that, you know, pretty right? like if your album cycle is two or three years then it's like you know you're like you know two or three albums into it in 10 years right? yeah yeah exactly just uh fourth one is uh coming out this fall cool i love but, the split man uh it's, thank you very much that, so that was good. For me, that was a, a callback to the great grand tradition of like the, the the split records of the '90s and stuff, where it's like, yeah, they cover one of the bands on the other side, and, and oh, that's like, great. A whole and like there's a collab song and like, all these like things that only nerds like me care about. I'm like we're gonna yeah. do all of those things, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's gonna be our vans on the cover because that was our first bonding moment. We had the same year, model, and make. <laughs> it's gonna be our vans on the cover. That was. That was from Daisy, but uh, yeah, oh, that's awesome. I was like, great. That could not possibly be any more niche and more my speed. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. But it's also, yeah, people discover things in their own time, right? And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and that is the promise of all this connection that we have, that like someone can hear Victim's Family or the Freak Accident and, be, and instead of being like, oh, yeah, that record came out 20 years ago. They're experiencing it now. Yeah. They're experiencing it next to like idols and next to like – Billy Eilish. I don't know what people are listening to, but like, like whatever, whatever it is, they're exp- and like it, you know, and it really is just a matter of you know, there's an opportunity again. Everything being at the same volume is cacophonous. Yeah, like that's what we are, and that's where we're at. And ultimately, people can smell BS usually. Usually, so it allows opportunity also for things that didn't get their day in the sun. Right. And that's wonderful. You know, that that's the good side of things where it's not just like record crate diggers that are like, you know, the most obscure, like, when do you ever leave your basement? Kind of like guys, <laughs> let's be clear, guys uh, talking to each other in like some private space. It's everybody gets a chance to be part of the party. And that's that's wonderful. And I, I try to, you know, with this show, I try my best to like put on people that people should know as well as, as folks that people definitely do know. And I don't know. Am I, is it successful? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it either way. You know, it's the same thing with the music. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let, let's, let's, we, we, we went through all the way around. Now we're, now we're back to where we started with the, the, the split with nasal. The split. Rock, yeah. Right. That's great. Love it. So victims, family back and doing stuff. How long of a gestation period was, was the, uh, was the split? How long did it till fruition until inception? So we recorded basics in 2022. Oh, that's not bad. I guess. Yeah. Like at the end, like um, Thanksgiving. And I think it took another year for me to get vocals on there for some reason or another. Um, Yeah. It's just uh, slow going on the, on the vocals and the mix. Mostly just, you know, kind of a, a, kind of a financial kind of bind, you know? Sure. So, um, so it just took like a, took a while to afford all the rest of the studio time and the, you know, the mix and all that 
kind of stuff and then sort of working out. So yeah, you know, like a year and year and a half or something from, from beginning to, to end, which is not terrible. Yeah. Under those uh, circumstances, trying to organize things between two bands on like a massive, oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think we got, do not like get me started. One email please. thread that has like 600, like, right. like for 600 deep. And it's like, oh, nightmare God. without a dream. I'm dude. Starting, another, <laughs> starting another thread. Can yeah, I just call somebody instead? Yeah. No, uh, Anyway. There's always somebody that like chimes in, you know, after a decision has more or less been reached, and hey, let's just relitigate all this. Oh, <laughs> or so I hear. Uh, yeah, like it's it, it, it's a labor of love, right? I mean, because these are again two bands with very distinct and, and unique sounds, you know. So it's like there, there's a urgency to it, but it's not like you can tell which band is which by the yeah. same token, right? I mean, and it's um. You know choice songs from both bands like it isn't like somebody's leftovers <laughs> yeah <laughs> being no. reheated or anything yeah no no i uh love the tunes i mean i feel like i have liked the opportunity to play more of them live beforehand i mean i i really get it burned in yeah just get it get them really burned in you know like i'm i am really liking that with the new freak accident stuff we did get a chance to play a few of these uh, live and uh, some of them were we'd been working on for like some quite some time, um, but yeah, they're. Uh, but I, I I really like the new tunes. It's kind of, I kind of feel like we're sort of a little bit kind of getting back into the sort of the things I hate to admit era where it's sort of like it's oh, a sure. little bit it's a little bit um, I don't want to say funky, but it's a little bit more like on a on a groove oriented thing. Right. Um, Right. Which I don't think feel like we've done like that kind of stuff for a long time. Seemed like as victims family went on, we tried to be more and more sort of like complicated thrash. Yeah. Like more mechanized is the wrong word, but more like kind of propulsive. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so this feels like a little bit like going back uh, into something that we hadn't really done for a while. So there's a few of those sort of. Yeah things which feels kind of cool this is a gear that we do that we've been doing from the beginning yeah sure know? yeah yeah but, yeah and it's sort of like it's been long enough that it's kind of new again yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> you can find some some uh some joy in right it, some everything value. old is new again right right That's so here. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> So says my chiropractor. Get yeah. it. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, but it, it, again, there there's still kind of an urgency too. I love the the artwork um, is killer on this. Who oh yeah, the Brian. Desert? The guy uh, is called Brian Nothing. Yeah, uh, he's an old friend of us. We met from Dallas. He lives in Philadelphia now. Um, and uh, yeah, just painter. Just, just great stuff, you know. Well, I want to be I want to be mindful of your time. You've certainly gone through all of it, but something I've I've been doing with uh, uh, I don't know for the last few decades has been like uh, when there's a new record, like kind of go through each of the songs and you can like say a little something about Great. each one of them. Are you, yeah, doing that? Okay, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, sure. I guess I could have like prepared wish you for that. I wish I had a record in front of me. Uh, that's fine. I'll throw it up on the screen. So let me let me do, let me do that. So first person shooter is the first one up. So yeah, let's let's do this. Uh, I like this view better. There we go. This is this is where the audio listeners are like, what's going on now? What are they doing? Oh, are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So first person shooter is the first one up. Yeah. So uh, you know, it's a it's a piece that I kind of had around for a while, like starting with a double double time sort of thrash thing, and then it kind of yeah. goes into the aforementioned sort of groove uh, deal and the the lyrics. I just kind of came up spontaneously after the shooting at the top supermarket in buffalo you know it's like yeah. man i yeah you know like i mean lyrically my whole life like everything has been sort of tongue tongue in cheek and very satirical and stuff and like you know i just felt like this is one of these moments where it's like just leave all that shit aside and really just you know it's to me that song is just saying just like what the fuck you know yeah yeah, yeah. i just it's... yeah that's yeah, what's the, horrible uh, anyway yeah i break, mean break, i always break, think uh, about that onion um the, the the onion shooting article no way to prevent right. this says nation 
It says only it says only nation where this regularly happens. Yeah, yeah. And they just keep running it with like an updated photo and it's like oh it's the like the harshest of tokes but yeah yeah so anyway you know like um yeah i don't know what else you can really say about that one right you know yeah pretty straightforward it's 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 probably the more one of the more confrontational you know yeah l- literal things i've ever written so well it's hard not to when you have something like that right it's, yeah it's, it's, yeah i mean you know once clearly doesn't work <laughs> well i mean i think it's i think it's our first album since the death of irony so you know yeah r.i.p to r.i.p to a legend (laughs) so uh how about stop a beating heart how about that one oh so that's a larry tune um you know and uh very well crafted sort of like a uh oh man it's it's a great song can't really not really sure what he's I mean, I, I sing the lyrics and I, I kind of know what they're about, but I know. <laughs> <laughs> Big idea. <laughs> it's a, it's about thoughts and prayers, you know? Okay. Um, uh, but you know, it's got, it's got a, it really rocks for a song that's mostly in five, four. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. No notes. No notes. <laughs> Uh, how about trash? Trash is a, uh, yeah, trash is a thing. Like basically everything I own is one day going to end up in the trash. And uh, <laughs> so it's just basically uh, heartwarming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of heartwarming stuff here. Uh, uh, yeah. It's kind of a, it's kind of just a, almost like a garagey rocker. Yeah. You know? Pretty straightforward. Straightforward rocker. For y'all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's no Ramones. Don't get me wrong, but no, no. <laughs> <laughs> too many guitar solos. Uh, uncertainty is um, uncertainty is kind of a uh, yeah. Well, basically, it's yeah. It's basically talking about you know when you're talking to someone and they're like, "I know something about that," you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it never right. happens. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ralph explaining. Yeah. You know. So, uh, <laughs> And then I want to see the sun. Uh, you know, it's like that's that one's sort of. Uh, it's kind of difficult to to really. I don't know. It's kind of interpretive, really. It's more yeah. sort of just like. I think it's kind of like, just talking about. Uh, I really have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at some point, I, at some point, I kind of like start, start talking about conspiracy theories and how people sure. just like basically believe just bullshit, you know, like objective uh, facts are just you know gone, you know, almost because it's fun. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's like because that's that's who I am. Like you just believe crazy stuff, huh? Yep, yeah. that's who I yeah. am. Okay, well, apparently there's it's, it's a growing pastime. It's a. <laughs> People are really into it. It's like yeah. objective facts. What's that? Where did you get that information? <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, and so those are the victims' family sides. Uh, of course, if you have anything to say on any of the nasal rod stuff, that would be fantastic. But you don't. Oh, know they're awesome. Them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're great. Amazing. I love. Uh, yeah, the makers. Is very very ripping song, man. Yeah, really. Just, man, love all their stuff. Uh can people people can still get the digital people can still get the the vinyl right yeah so it's pre-order but it's actually out tomorrow oh, tomorrow uh, yeah as, at the right. time of this recording exactly so march right. 20, I, march 22nd it's live there was some reason why we we're doing it today and now i just remembered why it just kind of <laughs> happened that way which actually turned <laughs> yeah, out, turned out to be last great week. and then you asked me about <laughs> last week and they're like oh, i'm not sure yeah and then i wrote back i'm like no actually i forgot i have a show so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no that's that's uh it's, 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 it's the quote flipper it's the way of the world at least in this show it is pretty much <laughs> lately uh so cool yeah i know it's, it's a great record that's uh that that's in the modern meat space victim family nasal rod split I'll, I'll put a link to it in the in the show notes and everything so folks can go get it any release tours or shows or anything uh happening? yeah so we're sort of uh, tim's kind of dealing with an, a shoulder injury right now so we're ah, trying right. to figure out how he's getting through that so i i know there uh nasal rod is doing some shows in support of the uh of the the record they have a they have a release show coming up which i should have that information in front of me but i don't (laughs) but they're playing portland in in support of the uh of the new release and um 
we're going to be having a talk about, you know, what our plans are for, but we're going to try and do something for the rest of this year, but fit something like, in. yeah. Trying to figure out what, uh, what Tim's, uh, shoulder health is like. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's real deal. And that's, that's a occupational hazard of rock and roll aging. Yeah. It's, just, it's rough when you're a drummer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> helps. It helps to be able to move as it turns out. <laughs> who knew i didn't have that on my bingo card but yeah there you go. and uh, i think we're going to do a a uh, listening party for the victims family fans in santa rosa at the next record store that'll be oh, cool. um, friday march 29th i don't have the time but i think it's i suspect it's in the evening uh come on down and we'll we'll have some records so if you're happen to be in sonoma county next uh next friday you're going to be doing that come, come on out for that then yeah, yeah it'll be fun I've been a long, long supporter of all things Victims Family and the Freak Accident. Yeah, Freak yeah. Accident's playing uh, April 14th in uh, in Albany at the Ivy Room. Ah, the Ivy Room. That, That's awesome. I've got that hap coming up. I haven't played there. We played there with Nocturnal Habits and uh, Drug Apartments. I guess that was 2019. Oh, wow. Uh, really? No. Yeah, I guess it was. Oh, that was a long time ago. But... I, I never would have had it on my bingo card that the Ivy Room would, would get as cool as it is. I mean, it's always just a great room, don't get me wrong, but yeah. they have some really fantastic shows there. And uh, it, it, it deserves a shout out for Albany, not exactly a hotbed of uh, rock and roll activity. <laughs> and now, and now, <laughs> and now it, it is. Was. Yeah. And, and now uh, it is. And that's, no, that's I mean, it's Albany. been there forever, right? And then they yeah. only started like really doing show shows like that I can remember, or maybe I don't know, but it's just like. It hasn't been that long. There, yeah. No, yeah, there was always like every once in a while they would have a banger there. We're like, really? They have your room? But then, but they'd be like, oh, but that room's awesome. And that's great because it's like, except for Philip K. Dick tourists, like no one's hanging out in Albany. You know, yeah. like, people live there, but like people don't go there to like for tourist stuff. So it's, it was kind of like, oh, that would be a cool show. And then it's such a nice room that when, you know, uh, it, it, Tony Bedard and and all them started bringing in shows. It was it was like picking up the slack for the hemlock, pretty much. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's great. It's wonderful. It's nature pours a vacuum, Ralph. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> no, those guys have done a lot to to keep things going. You know. Yeah, it's a respect because it's a it's a it's a really awesome room, and they they've managed to again literally put Albany on. The yeah, like, people on their tour dates like, do we have to put Albany? What is the people going to think we mean New York? <laughs> oh wait, and and the revamped Stork Club, man. I, you know, I still have yet to freaking. And I was oh, like, you gotta go. It's I've really yet good. to go there since they revamped it, and like, uh, yeah, I would, I would love to. Yeah, we we played there when we did the Victims Family with the uh, Gibby Haynes and the Paul Green yeah, Rock yeah, yeah, Academy. Yeah. But you know, people were people were mad because uh, they sight lines it was like too crowded. And they were like, I can't see anything, and people were. <laughs> well it's it's like i mean i think they raised it finally but like that stage was like fucking five inches well, or just, something right it was yeah. also like you know i'm trying to book a show like on the tuesday after new year's eve you know you're like i emailed you know the bottom of the hill on there like really are you kidding <laughs> <laughs> Get back to some 2028. So, yeah. Now they're like, you know, yeah, of course we want to do Gibby Haynes, but not on a fucking Tuesday after New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. De absolute death. Yeah. That's yeah, uh I I I like that the Star Club is back. I like that it's uh No, it's great, man. It seems to be like a place that people would want to go to. No, it's a it's a great it's a great game. And that's yeah. awesome. Uh, and and yeah. I guess I don't know, maybe I'll have to book a show there because I I don't I seem to not go every time I'm <laughs> We play the Bay Area, but this wasn't convenient this time. Ralph, this has been great, man. Thank you so much for doing it. Uh, really appreciate having you on and talking about all the stuff. Uh, it's a pleasure, and it was long, long overdue. Well, thanks, Conan. It. And uh, Really an honor, really a pleasure. Well, it's, I'm glad to have you. And so last question. This is the only canned question that I ever ask. Okay. That's right. Get back in frame. Uh, and you can choose to interpret it however you like. But why do you do what you do? Um, why do I do what I do? I don't know, man. You know, I, I really love playing music in front of people. Like I, I, I'm a I'm a person that loves playing live in front of people. And I think that's to me, I mean, I like all the stuff about playing music. Like I really like all the shit about it i like making the records i like doing the stuff but i really love playing in front of people 
I don't know. I just really, I, I, I really dig that, just that energy of playing in front of people. And I just don't, uh, to me, that's just never gotten old, you know? Um, and yeah, so that's, that's it. Well, I hope we get to see you do it soon. I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Conan. Thanks so, much, thanks so much, man. Take care, brother. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, uh, there he goes, Ralph Spite. Let's uh, play something off of this, off of this new victim's family, uh, Nasal Rod's split. I'm gonna play the. Uh, I'm gonna play the. Uh, needs no introduction, first person shooter here. That's what we're gonna play. There you go. First person shooter from In the Modern Meat Space, Victim's Family and Nasal Rod. Victim's Family and Nasal Rod. Jesus Christ, Conan, get it together. Split LP that you can find. Well, it might be pre orders if you're really on it. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's going to be soon enough. If you're on the same path. That's it. That's Ralph Spite. I'd like to thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, that was a lovely time carry through a lot of Bay Area history there. And, uh, yeah, long time coming. Name of the show is Code New Transport Tonic Reversal. Thank you so very much for listening to it. 
You can find this show Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Streaming live, YouTube, and Twitch. Podcasted later, always free, no ads, no sponsors, no kidding. Archives available for free, protonicversal.com. But if you like the show and you want to support it, and get episodes sooner, you can do so at patreon.com slash protonicversal. $1 a month, early access. That will get you there. Uh, thank you so very much, everybody. Sharing the show around. Signing off. Leaving a review. Subscribing to your platform of choice. All that helps people discover the show. And it's a, Anyone within the it's a darn nice thing to do, man. Really, when it comes down to it. Uh, what do we got? Uh, oh, Kick Congo Powers. Gun Club. I've got and uh, they came in the bad seeds. Cramps. Etc. That's next week. Looking forward to that one. Uh, Greg Norton from Ultra Bomb and Husker Dew coming in. <laughs> Back in at some point, too. Hopefully before they go on tour. Uh, and God, all kinds of stuff. Just stay tuned. This microphone and thank you for listening. Sound into electricity. Stay safe out there. Can you hear me now? And check you later. Out on Route 128, in the dark and lonely. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the... It's the end of radio! The last announcer plays the last record! The last what? Leaves the transmitter! Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now?
Is it really broadcasting if there's no one there to receive? It's the end of radio. As we come to the close of our broadcast day. Radio.